blood sugar. Here, let's Why check. Why don't you check? You want a water, baby girl? Her blood sugar was 551, which is extremely high. When she was diagnosed in the hospital, it was 680. So that's how quick this stuff can turn. Like if they don't get insulin for the shortest amount of time, serious things can happen. Like I can't breathe. Most type ones, you'd be shocked at how easy they make it look and what they go through behind the scenes that most people don't see. As a mom, we always call ourselves the pit crew because you never know when you have to come in and help out. And you can doubt her hands are super clammy. It's going down, but it's still very high. So by it going down, we at least know she got some insulin and her body will catch up. And this is also the part people don't really see either is that it's a family affair. It's the entire family that's involved. Do you want me to put that on your neck? No? He had cold flu symptoms and he collapsed. He came down the stairs and he just collapsed. He ended up in um, diabetic ketoacidosis and his blood sugar level was 538 and he had collapsed veins. So they couldn't get the needles in to give him any insulin. And, uh, and it was just really a horrific thing to see and the nurse, I'll never forget the nurse telling me, it's a good thing that you got him in. He may not have survived the night. We had to learn quickly how to be carb counting, giving our child insulin shots every time he would eat a meal. We just had to turn into a doctor, a nurse, a nutritionist, everything within four days before we brought him home. And the more that I know now about this disease, and I still see misdiagnosis, and children who pass away, even adults who pass away, because they think that it's a simple cold or a flu virus. You don't really know what diabetes is all about until you either have it yourself or you have a family member that has been affected by it. So I've been a paramedic for a decade and I'm used to seeing all of these things uh, in the emergency setting with uh, diabetic patients and hypoglycemia, patients having these really low blood sugars, uh, their families calling 911. I come out, fix their blood sugar, take them down to the hospital and, and away I go to another call. People wouldn't even know that I'm diabetic and I am. We are desperately fighting for awareness. Um, we're fighting to make sure that when they are diagnosed, that people know what they're going through. It's not about diet and lifestyle. Anyone at any age can be diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It's autoimmune. So don't just think, oh, it's diabetes, it's not going to happen to me. Mm, it's type 1 diabetes and it's autoimmune and it can happen to anyone. Those two women are, they're saints. Uh, to do what they do every single day, the fight they, they have for us diabetics um, is just, it, it's incredible what they, they have been doing for, for years now. I was introduced to them by Jim Steiner, our mayor, 
And uh, I love the relationship that we've, we've kind of made and the partnership we've made with the Corona Fire Department and East T1D. Um, I feel like it's, it's really helping with awareness, especially here in the city. And, and I love it. He's wonderful. We love Eric. He's such a great volunteer friend. He's always willing to help. Eric's testimony is powerful because he was also misdiagnosed. A nurse told me that you're lucky that you got him in. He may not have survived the night. And now that I know more about type 1 diabetes and how many children do pass away from being undiagnosed, I just thank the Lord every day that he had no life-altering complications and that he survived. And so I've made that pain into my purpose and my passion to raise awareness. We want to raise awareness to what type 1 diabetes is because we want the cure to be found.